Hey folks and welcome to the Pipnotic Symposium for the 27th of September 2023. Uh, my apologies for not doing any symposiums over the past week or so. We've had um, we have a bunch of uh, people in the house uh, building. We're getting our garden done and getting a bunch of stuff uh, on the house organized, and so we have people everywhere, and it's super noisy. So I haven't had any peace to to do these recordings. So. There seems to be a hole in the work schedule now, so I'll get one of these out. And today we're going to talk about uh, the dashboard because I think it's pretty awesome and I just want people to understand uh, what it's used for, how to use it, and what all of these different fields uh, mean, okay? Because this is something I think can help uh, many people. Um, and I really, I recently added a few different assets, uh, more crypto assets to some of the, the major um, and more liquid uh, pairs for uh, crypto cross with the US dollar. Um, so you'll find those in there now if there are any signals available. And I mean, if you're not seeing anything in here, then there's no signal for that asset. Please remember that if the signal is more than 20 periods old, that, that there's simply not going to be a signal. So here we have Ethereum, American dollar. This signal is just about to, uh, to expire in within the next four hours. And so once that happens, uh, the Ethereum uh, American dollar signal will disappear. So if we bring that up and just to have a, a quick look at it, uh, you can see it right here. Um, and it's this one here. So the algo is saying it might be a good idea to begin to sell from around here. This is the sell zone. This is the area of supply. And the algo seems to think that, yeah, that'd be a pretty reasonable price to begin to sell. We'd be moving into uh, uncharted waters, rebalancing this price inefficiency, and there's a high likelihood that prices will uh, wriggle down from there. But as you as you could see on the uh, on the chart there, it's about to expire. And if we just count how many periods we have, uh, so the the pattern was qualified when this red candle closed, which means that when this red candle closed, we were being told that should price move up into this area, into this blue box that there's a high likelihood the prices move away. But this happened a long time ago. We just count how many periods. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So 22 periods ago, which is um, slightly different than uh, what we can see in the dashboard. I think the, uh, the dashboard is configured uh, a little bit differently than the, this, the, than the software that I'm using right now. Um, but it will simply fall away. The signal will fall away uh, very soon. And when that happens, it'll disappear from the list of, of trades in the dashboard. Okay, so let's go back to the dashboard. Um, so what we're, what we're looking at here, if I just walk through this one by one, um, here we have the name of the asset. Okay, so this will essentially match the ticker in your platform. Okay, so Euro SEK is the euro cross with the Swedish krona, and you'll find that in here somewhere. So if we try and find that E versus the Swedish krona, gosh, okay, um, just back from my <clears throat> my server, I can see that um, it stopped sending signals to the dashboard. Um, there was some uh, some software updates on my VPS and none of the stuff reloaded so I just rebooted the server and it'll be up and running in just a moment that happens sometimes which is a pain but uh, that's what we get but that happened probably two periods ago which is why the signals uh, are not accurate so the number of rather the age of the signals are not accurate okay so that's exactly what happened but I just rebooted the server and that should be running now but I mean for this one here the euro Swedish krona it said uh, two periods and so it was actually qualified when this red candle closed and within the past eight hours uh, the server uh, restarted or rather um, you had to reboot because of the uh, the software updates and the software did not start running so I just switched that on now so essentially what it's telling us is that we have the euro Swedish krona on the four hour chart uh, the signal was sent to the server to the website uh, when this candle here closed. Okay, so if we go back to that, 
Okay, so the age is two, so it was formed two hours ago, which is a beautifully fresh, lovely area. So this is a very high probability uh, trade. Okay, and this is the four hour chart. So if we go back, you can see here, we have the color blue, which represents the four hour chart. And then we have the operation, we're selling. Okay, so we want to sell at 11.7106, going back to the terminal here. It's probably around where that box is, 11.7106. Let's put that on and see if we get something close to that here. 11.71, a little bit lower. It's right there. This will probably go 11.7106. Close enough, just the bottom of the body of that candle. Yeah, close enough. So around there. Okay. So that's the entry. The stop is 11.7523, which is going to be the top of that. 11.7523, which is the top of that area there. Okay. And so what's happening here is is this, this I suppose you could call it a scanner, is qualifying this asset. It's saying we have a fresh pair of, a fresh... Um, area of supply that is formed on the Euro Swedish Krona on the four hour chart. The entry price is here. The stop price is here. Um, this may or may not be where you would put your stop. Personally, I like to do about one and a half times or one and a third times the size of the area of supply because sometimes price uh, does in fact enjoy moving up and kind of poking a little bit deeper before it. Um, before it manages to find available liquidity to drive prices lower. And typically this is going to be above these historical um, highs and lows. Okay, and so essentially it's telling us that this is the area that's interest to us. We have a departure, price moved below this low here, which you can see with this line here. You can't see that on a dashboard, but it doesn't matter. But you can just know, have confidence that the area of supply caused prices to trade below this area. Okay, this historically respected area, and it's respected because when price got down to this area here, we turned around. Okay, so we went down to this area here, and we went up um, 750 points, 777 points, which is a lot. Okay, and now price is broke down, so we were able to trade below this. Okay, so then we have the zone. What does that mean? Well, the zone means that we are in a buy zone, which means that we are uh, quite high. Um, relative to the histogram, so even though we're starting to we're starting to sell, we are we are in the buy zone, which means that prices are lower. So the histogram, which is for those of you who don't know what the histogram is, it is it's a piece of software that I wrote that helps identify the state of the macro and micro cycles uh, for an asset. And so when it says the buy zone, it simply means that let me draw it for you because it'll make this a lot clearer. So if we have, this is like maybe an average price, whatever that average may be. Okay, and then you have you have a positive cycle and then it goes negative and then it moves like this. So this is what the cycle will look like. Okay, so when prices are up here, this is typically known as the sell zone because we are, we are moving using uh, simple mathematics we are reaching high prices. And so high is, it's a relative thing to say something is high. You say high relative to what? Well, relative to historical cycles, okay? So everything is moving in cycles, okay? So if it's saying that we're in the buy zone, that means that we're down here, okay? And you can see actually that prices are low. And then you say again, low relative to what? Well, low relative to this cycle, this whole, actually this whole cycle from here all the way down to here, okay? So this point right here, this is low relative to this, okay? And so by telling us that we're in the buy zone, it's telling us that we are very likely going to begin, let me change the color just to help signify that we are very likely going to begin our bull cycle, okay? So if we're in the, the buy zone, that means we're very likely going to begin to move up, okay? And then once we're up here, the software is going to say, well, actually, we're quite, we're quite high. And again, you say high relative to what? Or relative to the beginning of this cycle. And so I'm using simple mathematics to, to help me identify where we are relative 
to these cycles. And so when you're taking cycle information that is available on the macro time frame, which I think is really, really fascinating, because this enables us to, uh, to identify where we are relative to the really big moves, the really big cycles on, for example, I don't know, let's say the weekly chart or the monthly chart or the six month chart or the daily or the four hour, if that's your, your, big, your big time frame. Because this whole structure, let me redraw it now, this whole structure can be, can look like this, where you have a macro cycle that can look like this. Oops, wrong tool. You can have a macro cycle that looks like this. This could be a week long cycle. Okay, it looks like that. Okay, but on the smaller time frames, that wasn't in the middle, let's put it here. On the smaller time frames, it might look like this. So we're, we're actually negative here. We go positive, we go negative. Positive, negative, positive, okay? <clears throat> like that, and so, but on this one here, maybe we're actually saying, well, actually we have like negative, positive, negative, and, it, and it's doing like this, it's oscillating on these micro time frames, micro uh, cycles, and inside here we can have another one. They can go like that. Okay, you get the point. And so what we want to do by focusing on cycles is identifying alignment when we reach here or when we reach here. Or if we're not able to identify these lovely these really beautiful beginnings and ends of these cycles, um, what we can do, on the other hand, is that we can say, you know what? Well, I want I want to see if we can identify once we've left the beginning of a weekly cycle. So we are in the buy zone on the weekly chart, and then you go down to the smaller time frames. We use other software that we have, the supply and demand uh, algos, and this tells us when do we start to see um, buy and sell zones forming. Um, that are confirming an increase in prices at a point when we have reached the bottom of a macro cycle, let's say on the weekly chart. And so we're operating down here and we start to see patterns forming using our other software, leading us to believe that prices are potentially going to move higher. Well, then we can trade these with confidence and we can hold these trades also with confidence because there is a very high likelihood that prices are going to continue moving at least until the mean. Okay, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they um, they go all the way up here and we have a huge run, but other times we don't. Other times we are not done with this particular phase of um, of this price price behavior. Okay, because down here prices can accumulate and they can exhibit dis uh, liquid liquidity distribution patterns in this area. And if this is a weekly chart, this can go on for days, days and days and days, sometimes weeks even. Because if you have, let's say, there's like maybe eight weeks or 12 weeks of accumulation here, where you essentially are, are finding an area uh, of liquidity where prices are, I mean, this prices are seeking liquidity in order to drive prices ho higher. And this can this can happen for a long time. Maybe it happens, sometimes it happens in a few weeks, other times it happens in a few months. But eventually, because we're down here and the cycle, the bear cycle is complete, we are accumulating. And we, and we know this with a relatively high degree of confidence because we are identifying where we are in the context of these macro cycles, which is, which is super, super powerful. Okay, and so, knowing this can give us confidence in holding these trades because we have an expectations that prices are going to move higher until this cycle completes and then this happens here but instead of accumulation we have distribution and the same thing happens and then prices begin their downward move okay so that's why these cycles are really really important and so going back to here if we have Let's see if we can find something that has. Um, I want to try and find some assets where we have. You know, let me let me go like this. I just want to see like when we have several of the same. Because this becomes interesting then. Okay, we have. Okay, here we have oil versus the American dollar. We have conflicting. Sorry, we have the same 
the same operations that we're buying but we have that on the daily chart and the hourly chart which is really interesting and then you have the same thing here on Brent okay and so you know that okay on the daily chart we're in the sell zone on the hourly chart we're in the buy zone and you think well, what does that mean and what that means is it means that like we said before we have these varying let me change the color we have these these cycles that go like that so this could be the daily chart we have our, our mean and then this could be the hourly okay and so we are on the daily chart we are in the sell zone which means that we're up here and on the hourly chart we are let me draw it we're quite low okay so we are in the buy zone which essentially means that prices may have already begun to break down because because we're in the buy zone we're low so this is telling us that we are in the sell zone on the daily chart but prices are potentially already starting to break down on the hourly chart because you can see here in the next uh, element in the table that we are already exhibiting selling behavior um, at this price point relative to this macro cycle where we are already looking we have a we have a higher probability to the downside uh, for oil versus the uh, versus the American dollar and so when you start to see these symbols overlap that's a really beautiful uh, confluence of, of, of factors that would lead us to believe that prices are indeed going to start to break down okay and so again using this example uh, selling in the sell zone on the daily chart so we have confidence that we are high on the daily chart relative to the beginning of this cycle here so we're considering the whole cycle here okay we're high we're high but on the hourly chart which could be our entry time frame we are actually looking to begin to move low this is beautiful so if we take this information now and we go to the price chart XBR versus the American dollar let's do that okay so what we can see here we have the daily chart over here we are we are really high again what does that mean that means that we are high relative to the daily cycle so if we look at the daily cycle we draw we have a mean here somewhere and then we have we have this okay this is the bottom and we are reaching here so just like I drew in the other text we're super high relative to where we were historically and relative to where we have um, seen a value decrease and increase over time which is value is essentially a moving window of, of price uh, relative to the beginning of this cycle here and knowing that you can see I mean on, on the on the hourly chart let's let's really take a deep dive here you can see that on the daily chart was super high which is wonderful you can see zo zones areas of demand starting to break down we would not take this trade here why because we are in the sales on the daily chart that's a really bad idea and the beautiful thing about when areas of supply and demand are consumed is that they very 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 often they operate as support or resistance uh, in future tests and so we had this zone here which was removed the area that removed it was was actually just in here let me zoom in to make that a little clearer okay so if you, if you look at this we had a zone that was marked off on the chart okay we managed to move above these highs which is telling us that we have strength here but if we go back to some of the stuff that we spoke about uh, last week when prices are in a buy or a sell zone let's say they're in a sell zone for the sake of example here prices are in the area of value and they jump up to higher prices what is this jumping up why would prices jump up when prices are already high well this is because uh, prices are looking for for ask prices to in order to drive prices lower we're not there probably isn't going to be a whole lot of uh, bids looking to uh, support price uh, for the shorter term because prices are super high and so there's going to be profit taking up here there's going to be uh, a lack of bids okay and this this lack of bids is going to maybe draw some of the thicker liquidity actually it's not going to draw the thick liquidity but it's going to it's going to make the order book look a little bit like this where if we have market okay this is this is the cycle like this 
hope this is not too confusing. Let me maybe do this in a different color. Color with something very different, magenta. So we have our, we have like this, okay? And we are, maybe we have a pretty, a pretty thin book on, on the bid side up here because we're quite high. But maybe we have a slightly thicker uh, bid side uh, down here as prices get uh, more discounted. Here we are, we have high prices. Prices are quite premium. And so any attempts to jump price higher is just an attempt to kind of um, to seek liquidity, uh, which will essentially cause prices to move down. There's, there's, there's going to be less bids up here than there is down here. And so if you see prices jumping higher up here, when the context of the whole move is telling us that we are in a daily sell zone, well, this is going to lead us to believe that prices are likely going to move down. And this is just an attempt to identify, to seek liquidity. Okay. And this is super common behavior. Um, it's not rocket science at all. It's super, super common predictable behavior. If you're aware of where we are relative to these cycles. And uh, once you understand what's going on, in relation to the state of liquidity at this particular uh, time during the cycles. If you're at the bottom, it's going to look different. If you're at the top, it's going to look different. Okay, but we, we are up here. So these jumps higher is going to be prices seeking liquidity to do what? To drive prices lower. Okay, I hope that wasn't too confusing. It got a little bit ugly on the chart there. And so knowing that, I mean, you can see, okay, with that mindset, Okay, we have prices that are very high on the daily chart, high relative to the cycle that we are currently in. And we have, what else do we have going on? When here we have something that's really interesting, we have price inefficiencies. We have inefficient price movements. Okay, these inefficient price movements are really supporting our short bias because, I mean, what is not in an inefficient price? What is missing when price is inefficient? Pause the video and ponder that question for a moment. Um, and I will tell you something that is missing, something that's absent in price inefficiencies is, is liquidity because price can only move illiquid, sorry, rather inefficiently in the absence of liquidity. And so when prices are racing higher like this and moving into uh, structures of price that are telling us that we have thicker liquidity, we have sell zones established here, okay? Prices are moving higher. And when price moves inefficiently, you'll notice that the candles, they start to get taller and taller and taller as they race up and reach these, these more liquid uh, sides of the market. So the top of the book, okay, the asks, the absence of the bids, and this is happening in a very beautiful way because price is, is doing so inefficiently and inefficient moves fill much easier and quicker than efficient moves. And so price will need to rebalance this. We'll have to move back to a more liquid market state and price will have to do the same here. So we are reaching for liquidity that is on the opposing side of the market. Once we find that around here, this will cause prices to break down, rebalance this, rebalance this, and essentially, most importantly, we will have filled our distribution, period of distribution here, and the daily cycle um, will come to completion, and then we will start moving back down again. Okay, so this is uh, theoretically how it works. Okay, so going back to this, Okay, so the algo has restarted and it's rerunning. The data is flowing now, so our signal's gone. <laughs> so I can't look at that again. But we can continue with what these other um, pieces of information uh, mean. So we have the asset, we have the time frame, hourly chart, daily chart, four hour. This means that this signal was qualified on the respective time frames here. So this is slightly longer term, this is slightly shorter term. We have the, op the operation, so we have. Um, the signal. So a buy means that we have demand. Sell means that we have supply. This is the entry price. As I showed just a moment ago, we have the zone that has been formed. 
we have the stop which I also showed we have the zone this is relative to the cycle on the respective time frame we have the trend which is a cell the trend is just focusing on the state of the cycle where we are do we have the cycle continuing to move higher or is the cycle beginning to break down then we have the age and the age is actually probably one of the most important ones and the age is um, important because it's telling us a little bit about the freshness of a given zone so if we have two periods I think we covered this already but I'll just reiterate it once more it's telling us that the zone was qualified two periods ago okay and I did a study about half a year ago a year ago actually longer maybe over a year ago and th the conclusion of the study was that if a zone is established and price visits it within no more than 20 periods preferably under 10 then the likelihood of that zone holding goes up um, much much more as a matter of fact we were we were pretty deep into the 70 percent probability if price comes back and revisits these zones um, within um, it was under 10 periods okay and so what I've done here is I've color coded this just a little bit just to help kind of keep you uh, visually aware of what's going on let me zoom out let me show more 50 and so you'll notice that the young zones they're going to be green and the older zones they're going to be yellow so that's telling us they're a little bit stale so if you have uh, here in Bali <clears throat> um, if you have for example a papaya you have a young papaya which is green an old papaya is 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 yellow turns yellow or orange even and so this is uh, why I chose these colors so if you have a like a like a green papaya it's uh, getting pretty close maybe to to be eaten but if it turns uh, yellow you, I mean you can still eat it okay you can still eat the papaya but um, maybe the experience will be uh, less uh, less enjoyable because the maybe the uh, the fruit itself has become uh, a little old okay so I've tried to color code these according to um, this in order to give you a visual representation indication of, of where we are the freshness of this zone and the last column here this is simply the GMT and this is telling us a little bit about um, a little bit about uh, the time of when this area was qualified and so this if we refresh this here we'll probably get a new iteration I think it's running every every few minutes so we have let's see yeah so we just rolled in this is one minute ago okay so we have this is a new you can see that the graph actually changed a little bit and so we have we have new this happened one minute ago the 27th that is today for us in Asia and this is a one minute ago so it's running every every couple of minutes okay and it's running through a, a ton of different a ton of different assets okay good well I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that I hope this helps uh, clarify a little bit uh, what's going on here in the dashboard um, I think the information available there is a uh, is super super interesting um, and just to maybe move on a little bit and show what what else is available in the in the dashboard is I mean we have this as well this is the buy and sell zones and this is the algo trade and this is showing us uh, the trades that the algos are running and this we have the algo running on maybe 50 50 accounts or so um, we have demo accounts we have live accounts we have the asset name you can see the uh, the volume of the trade um, we have the entry okay so we have the entry price we have the stop price that the algo is configured to do we have the target and, and I mean the entry will pr more or less be similar to what you're seeing but different brokers have different uh, GMT offsets for their server time and so this can vary so if you're using the four-hour chart and then the day the rollover of the day is going to be different and so the candle structure is going to be different eventually if you go down to for example the one-hour chart they're going to start to look a little bit more alike but when you have um, you have varying server times things are going to look a little bit different okay which is why uh, one broker will show one pattern and another broker will show maybe won't show the pattern or show the pat the same pattern but on a different time frame the stops are going to vary this is again dependent on the configuration of the algo um, we have several guys who are um, using the algo uh, in, in pretty um, creative ways and so maybe people who are just using the algo out of the box which is what I'm doing um, maybe the the stop is going to be different because this is going to be reflected the stop will be 
uh, defined in the uh, configuration it'll affect the stop the target as well um, yeah and you can see the order is it's a limit order and so if you go through here you can go through these you can see that we have quite we have quite a few people running it on live accounts quite a few people running it on demo accounts if we have a look here the live account versus the demo account you can see that we have 75% uh, demo and 25% live accounts and you can see here the buy and the sell operations we have about the same okay we have about the same going on there so we have a lot of selling relative to the buying okay and then down here we have the asset strength reversion algo which is an algo that runs exclusively on the it uses the cycle information alone and I haven't modified this this algo for quite some time and this is going to be the next my next area of focus once we get things organized and so the mean and the, and the modifier this is stuff that probably won't make sense to any of you if you're not using uh, the algo but this is maybe something you don't have to worry uh, so much about but this is we have a few people who are using this um, primarily in Canada and Australia and, and and these people are typically using this on uh, smaller time frames to get in uh, quickly when these cycles are coming to a completion okay but the one I think is most interesting is the one up here so um, um, you can use that I think to help you um, uh, make your trading decisions and I hope my explanation of the table maybe helps solidify the theory behind uh, the madness um, and if you use it carefully and you and you're focusing on where we are and you're not just taking these trades out of the box without any thinking um, you, I think you'll find you'll do quite well okay so keep that keep that in mind if you have any questions uh, let me know I'm super happy to jump on a call and help clarify things and maybe do a bit of a hand holding and help walk you through some of uh, some of the ideas here um, yeah I'll leave it at that thanks so much for watching see you in the next video